I'm a resident of Missouri, and I have been for some time. By default, this means I've traveled Interstate 70 before, and although I prefer the northern alternative in terms of cross-state travel, there's no denying that 70 is by far the most used route in the state by both travelers and truckers. Adding on to this fact, I-70 across Missouri is home to some of the oldest sections of interstate in the entire system, namely around Kansas City and St. Louis. This means some parts of the route are not quite up to snuff by today's standards. To add to these two facts, traffic on I-70 has gotten really bad in recent years. Speaking from experience, traveling 70 at even the most remote and unorthodox hours proves to be a stressful and difficult venture. Now you see why I prefer US-36. As such, MoDOT has been brainstorming solutions to the overabundance of traffic for years. At first, there was the proposed Missouri Hyperloop, a 700 mile an hour transportation proposal that would connect Kansas City, Columbia, and St. Louis, with roughly half an hour of travel time across the entire state. This is of course an incredibly cool idea, but I don't think it's feasible, especially when you consider MoDOT's lackluster budget. This leaves us with the second, more likely option, widening and improving I-70 across the state. Although 70 has received numerous improvements in the Kansas City and St. Louis areas, the interstate still remains at four total lanes throughout the entire state from Blue Springs to I-64 in Wentzville. As such, Governor Parson introduced a transportation bill to improve I-70 statewide, which he then approved. Now we have Improve I-70, the several billion dollar transportation plan intended to widen I-70 from Blue Springs to Wentzville. Improve I-70 is split up into six sections. First we have the section between I-64 in Wentzville and Missouri 47 in Warrington. Next is the section between Warrington and US-54 in Kingdom City. Thirdly, we have the section between US-54 and US-63 in Columbia. Personally, I think this section will be the easiest section to finish first, due to the flat nature of the land and the minimal number of exits. It seems MoDOT agrees with me too, as this is the section they seem to be planning on finishing first, with construction beginning early next year and wrapping up in late 2027. Fourthly, we have the largest section of the project, covering ground from US-63 in Columbia all the way out to US-65 outside of Marshall. Next to last is the section between Marshall and Odessa, and then finally we have the section between Odessa and Blue Springs. MoDOT intends to first finish the widening between Columbia and Kingdom City, with construction lasting from 2024 to 2027, as I said earlier. Next, they plan to widen between Warrington and Wentzville, lasting from Fall 2024 to Fall 2028. Thirdly, they're going to upgrade 70 between Blue Springs and Odessa, lasting from Spring 2025 to, again, Fall 2028. Fourthly, MoDOT will upgrade between Kingdom City and Warrington, scheduled for Fall 2026, with construction planned to last all the way out to Fall of 2030. Yeesh. They plan to widen between Odessa and Marshall, with this section beginning in Spring 2027 and ending in Spring 2030. Finally, the last section MoDOT plans to widen is between Marshall and Columbia, the largest section, beginning in Fall 2027 and officially making 73 lanes across the entire state of Missouri at the end of the year 2030. On top of widening 70, MoDOT also plans to fix bridges at several rural roads along the route, and also plans on upgrading a few exits such as US-54 and I-64. While I am quite obviously hopeful that MoDOT will eventually work on extending I-72, I do 100% agree that I-70 needs to take priority in Missouri right now. The road is already bad and it's only going to get worse, so I'm glad that MoDOT's getting around to doing this now instead of waiting any longer. I still have my pipe dreams about 72 obviously, but I'm glad that 70 is getting treatment first. Huh, I wonder who that is. Shoot!